Hello everybody, welcome back to Techno Feed. Now you may be thinking that today we're supposed to have random feed, but there's not much news on the air, isn't there today? So I thought of something special. Since it's June already, it's the mid of the year, and a couple of new CPUs have come out, so I thought I would piece together a buyer's guide for brand new tech. I've got three different price points lined up. A $500 price point, a $1,300 price point, $3,000 price point, and the last price point is there's no price point. Is we just try and build it to its absolute max and just see how much it's worth. Along the way, I'm going to tell you what to look out for, what not to look out for, and as well as we're going to see how much they cost. So come on to today's ride, and before we get started, please remember to subscribe. Hit the bell icon so you can get notified when we make an upload, which is going to be daily. And don't forget to smash that like button. Alright, before we get started, first let me just lay out some rules. We are looking for non-bundles, so that means those CPUs that are bundled up with motherboards, those will not count because those are usually by season and they usually fluctuate between price. Second of all, it is not exactly, the amount we're going to get is not exactly the amount that we set, it's around there. It's about a hundred, sometimes a hundred dollars, or sometimes about fifty dollars difference. It's ain't that much, and we are not aiming at sales items. We are gonna aim at items that are having at original price, so that all of you can get it. And this set of parts are accurate. And without further ado, let's get started on our first price point, and the first tip is to know what price point or what your necessities is before choosing out any parts for your computer. Because if you don't know any part of your computer or you don't know what you're going to use it for, you don't know what kind of, well, components you require. So the first sort of price bracket is around $500. Now these are, this one is those people who are starting to start getting used to gaming who just need a rig to like just play with or like just get used to it or if you're on a rig that you want to build yourself this is a great price point to start at so the first thing we need in a computer of course firstly is the CPU and for $500 price point there's not much installed so we're just gonna look for the AMD Ryzen series of processors we got to look at the Ryzen 3 3200G specifically so, good thing about Google is having this search function of shopping over here. So, with this shopping function, we can see everything that's lined up here, like so. So, we're going to go to the top right. We're going to search from low to high, so we can search for the lowest price of which we can get this. Remember, we want to get new, brand new, with warranty. And all, just saying, all these currencies are all in Sing dollar SGD. There is no US dollar involved <laughs> because we're not in US. So we're just going to scroll down here until we find the first 3200G, which is here. Which, have a look, $140. Now, the one good thing about this Ryzen 3 3200G is the reason I chose it. Because firstly, it has 4 cores. It has 8 threads. Which is actually pretty decent. And... For a five around a five hundred dollar budget, there is not much to actually look out for for Intel. So AMD is your best bet at one hundred and forty dollars because for one hundred and forty dollars, the best one you're getting is either Pentium or a base Core i three, which both are both dual core and hyper thread, which is not exceptional these days. And with this, this comes with Radeon Vega graphics because if about around a $500 budget, you will not be able to get a dedicated graphics. So you must use the integraf integrated graphics from your CPU. With the 200 g it has Vega 8 graphics, which is a lot better than Intel's integrated graphics or Iris Plus graphics. So we're going to put that in the cart now. That's $140. Remember that number? Now, the next most important thing in computers is your motherboard. So, the next thing about motherboard is there are two different types of sockets. For Intel and AMD, they use two different sockets. For AMD, they use an AM4 socket. For Intel, they use an LGA socket of either kind of an LGA1151 or an LGA1 
one to hundred, which is in the tenth gen CPUs, which we're gonna look at later on. But first, we're gonna look at an AM4 socket. So for this low powered basic CPU, we need just a basic motherboard. So we're just gonna look for a B450 motherboard. So the cheapest B4 or the usually B, the B450 motherboards are at a reasonable price. So we have searched up B450 motherboards and we're gonna go back here down to the lovely section and go into low to high. Now what we're gonna look out for for B450 motherboards is the use of the B4 series. Now the B4 series, the reason we're choosing that is because it's compatible with Zen 2's processors where usually because with the older ones like for example you may see the z the a320s or the b350s which are b350 is the predecessor of the b450 but we do not want to buy a b350 if we're getting a third gen ryzen because they do not support third gen ryzen and their zen 2 architecture specifically so it's not really a compatible thing to do and then someone if you go and just gonna do that the motherboard will just probably end up dying also in your arms so not good and we also do not want to look for a320s or a450 motherboards because those are the exactly basic basic the most basic motherboards ever you do not want that and remember if you're using this system and you're starting out just use a b450 it gives you some upgradability down the line as well as a usual b450 motherboard would have two or four memory channels for quad channel so you can run in dual channel or quad channel which ideal for ryzen is dual channel memory but sometimes you will not be able to get dual channel because of some price ranges which we'll talk about that later on but remember when you get a motherboard do not go for a generation motherboard or a chipset of a motherboard that does not support your cpu if you need to know anything you can just go to your cpu or your processors manufacturer site like amd or intel either one of them there are, only, there are the only two that sells them but either one of them go to their websites look up your cpu and they'll tell you which chipset of a motherboard that is compatible with so once we got our motherboard checked out which is going to be the b450m by gigabyte this one is about 170 dollars so we're going to put that in there at 170 dollars and 99 cents after we place that in to our cart we are now going to move on to the next thing which we just talked about was ram so in ram usually amds you want one type of specific ram which is high powered high speed ram because amd tends to work better with high speed memory such as 3200 megahertz so for our base system we do not want to look at 2666 don't it may be cheaper but do not look at 2666 we want to look at 3200 megahertz ram and specifically at least minimum 8 gigs of 3200 megahertz ram so we're going to type that in now 3200 megahertz ram or ddr4 whichever onto the shopping list site here and we're just going to go to the right here and we're gonna search low to high. So we're gonna scroll down, scroll, 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 until we see the one that has 3200 megahertz. And it's the cheapest one you can find on the website. Okay, so now we have gotten finally down to the 3200 megahertz pages where we are looking greater with Newegg, Amazon, etc. But what we are looking for is basically some local shops around you which sell memory. So we are looking down here. We have got the uh, Kingston HyperX 8 gigabytes Fury Black Heatsink at 3200 megahertz. Always remember if you're using AMD, do 3200 megahertz or higher do not go below 3200 megahertz because if you do so you're just gonna have a flop everywhere your system is not gonna act well and it's just gonna be very bad and sadly for 3200 megahertz it don't come in four gig sticks so unfortunately we're gonna have to do with a single stick of eight gig 
of Kingston HyperX Ballistic Black Heat Sink. Sorry, oh my god, what's wrong with me? Of Black Heat Sink Memory. That is one crucial flaw of this. So we got sixty-seven dollars and forty-nine cents. So we're gonna put that in now. Sixty-seven dollars and forty-nine cents. Right now, after the RAM, we need a thing to power it. Which you're gonna look for is the power supply. So Practically, a power supply and minimum at what people recommend, I'll recommend at least 500 watts of um, power at least because it gives some leeway for upgradability down the future when you the system is getting slow or you just want a faster system or you just want to get in-depth or you even if you want to add a dedicated GPU. Like as we said, this around $500 system, we will not be able to get a dedicated GPU due to our price. So we're going to use the integrated GPU. But if in the future you want to get a dedicated GPU, this 500 watt power supply will help you. So we're going to go down now to the search bar here. I'm just going to type 500 watt power supply. And the first one top up, pop up is the best one already. Thermotix Smart Watt RGB 500 watt power supply and it's 80 plus silver certified and it's priced at $69 which is reasonably reasonable for around here and quick tip for power supplies do not go off to buy any other cheap power supply especially like this Chinese brand Apiva Silverstone maybe but we want to look at the certification for a power supply they have a few kinds of certification 80 plus silver 80 plus bronze or just 80 plus or the best one which is 80 plus gold efficiency now all these are all power supply efficiency ratings so if you're not your computer to run more efficiently do look out for these ratings usually they won't come out on old chinese ones but if you do end up getting one that's around the same price like here 69 dollars for an 80 plus silver certified power supply it is really good deal and I really recommend it. Plus, on the top side, RGB. Hey, hey, hey. RGB squad. Right, so once we've kicked out our power supply, we've now got to start on with storage to store our OS and our games. One thing you may think that you want to get a hard drive because it's really, 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 really cheap. Like, if I go down here and Google, oh, maybe a one terabyte hard drive. Or something like that. You will come out. Oh my god, look at that. It's $78 for a 2 terabyte hard drive. Why don't I just get that? No, you don't get that. It's a 2 terabyte hard drive. Do not ever, ever get a hard drive for your main bootload system because it will be extinguishingly slow. What do you want to look for? Is an SSD or known as a solid state drive. So we're gonna go in there for SSD. So because this is gonna be your first PC on a boot drive, this to be the only drive, a boot drive and drive to store games. Because I don't think you'll be able to play that high caliber games and in the future down the road, if you don't want to upgrade, you can add in a hard drive to store games, not your OS. OS always remember to store it on SSD or an M.2 SATA drive, which you get to those later on. But first we're gonna look and a 2.2.5 inch SATA solid state drive. So we're gonna key in at least a 240 gig if it's gonna be your only drive. 240 gigs is the sweet spot. Do not go 120. You may think 120 is enough. No, it's not. Your OS of Windows already takes up at least 20 gigs. So that means that after partitions, you have about 80 gigs left in your storage, which is really not a lot. So if you want to store games, 240 gig is the way to you. So we're going to go and look here, 240 gig SSDs. And we're going to go down to low to high, of course, we're on a budget. And good thing about Google is that they have this sidebar here for you to choose your capacity. So remember our capacity is 250 gig, so between 160 to 750. We're going to look for internal drives. 
do not look for external. The difference between external and internal is the external move for externally used. So they do not use this thing called SATA. They use type C or micro B and it's supposed to be plugged into USB. Which does not give that big bandwidth, but then we want to be in this is supposed to be a desktop, so we want to look for internal SSDs or hard drives, whichever you're looking at. So we're gonna look at SATA's. Gonna specific that SATA. Do not look for NVMe. NVMe is basically a faster version and a more modern. We're gonna talk about that later on. So we're gonna look at solid states. And over here, and then another tip is some SSDs, all SSDs, or most of them, should have this thing called NAND flash, which allows you to store a certain amount of cache or cacheless DRAM inside your SSD to make it go faster. Now, some SSDs, like particularly these cheap ones here at around $20, do not have them. And those SSDs do not, be, do not have them are going to be painfully slow. They're going to be slower than a spinning disk in a hard drive. So keep away from brands you don't know. And make sure if you are wanting to see a cheap hard drive or cheap SSD, sorry, SSD, do make sure you have cash. Else, if you get a cashless SSD, it is not worth the money. Remember, always look for a cash module or a cash section in the description of the SSD that you're going to buy. Now for me, I'm going to go with save. I'm going to scroll down. First one here, which we're going to see, and the one that I have chosen, is there are a couple choices here. When we come to about 240 gigs, we have a couple choices. We have got a team group one, we have got a Kingston one, and we got a Western Digital. All this comes at around the same price for 240 gigs. I would be okay if you get any of these, but I will be using the either one of these. So we're just going to give it an estimate of $55.49 because that's the most expensive one. So we can get those for cheaper or we can get those more expensive, but $55.49 is the most expensive already. So we can go, you can use any of these SSDs here. 240 gigs, they are within $50. That is a good price for 240 gig SSD. Now, finally, we just need one more thing, and that is a case to put all your components in. So, one thing I'm going to look for is a case that can hold your motherboard. So, for example, the motherboard we got was a Gigabyte B450DSH3. That is an ATX motherboard or an MATX motherboard. So, the case we're going to look at is an MATX case. So, we're going to look for an MATX case. And of course, this is the case I chose. It's the Armageddon Tesseract Core 2 Pro Great Gaming PC with tempered glass sides. Now, the reason why I chose this case is because, firstly, it's tempered glass and it's an MATX case, which is compatible with our motherboard. And usually for beginners, they prefer a slightly smaller case. So an MATX ATX is the perfect case to start off with. And now the second... the next tip I would like to do is that when you're getting started on a new computer, wait when there's sales like now, when there's always sales, flash sales going on, always go for flash sales because you can never get a better deal like this. I'm going to get it. And when I saw it, it was at $50 just a couple hours ago. I saw it was $50. That was what I saw in here. But now it's gone down to forty four fifty five. That's why I say I will not get a total actual like considerate price i'll just see what the price i got and that's why i got you may get it cheaper but you should get around the same price as i have and with all of these costs i've got together i've wrapped up to 508 dollars and 50 cents for the around 500 dollar bill which is pretty close considering that it's quite quite a reasonable setup now one thing i want to talk on is that I never thought anything about a cooler or anything for a CPU. Reason because that the Ryzen 3 3200G comes with its own RAID cooler. So I don't need to get a secondary or another CPU cooler to actually power it. Alright, now as we go on, we're now going to go on to the $1,300 tier of P 
PCs. So, this is the first one where we're going to have the battle between Intel and AMD. Right, first one for Intel, we're going to go with the i5-10400. But, we're not going to start with Intel. Sorry, when I say I start with Intel, I'm maybe going to start saying how Intel will lose by starting by talking about AMD. So, we're going to start with the AMD. And, of course, everybody's favourite. Every single tech YouTuber you see will recommend this CPU in a heartbeat for a budget like this and that is the Ryzen 5 3600 the Ryzen 5 3600 as I typed wrongly this is a great CPU considering it has 6 cores and 12 threads and just costs a minority of only 299 dollars which is a great deal considering that the only intel competitor is the intel core i5 10400 which is going to be in the other system and that costs 338 dollars though this one the other one has a high clock speed of 4.3 gigahertz this only has a clock speed of 4 gigahertz you have to know this costs almost 50 dollars less or you know 40 dollars less this costs almost Forty dollars less than the ten i Core i five ten four hundred, and that's a new, just released CPU from Intel. Yes, it may have a bit more like oomph in games, but this, as you know, AMD always thrashes Intel in multi-threaded performances, as well as multitasking task, editing photos, anything related to AMD. This is a good price for you, and for people who are in this price point, they're usually into gaming already or they're just going to upgrade or they just need a new system to upgrade to from the old one and this is just a great cpu for the money if you die die must go intel i5 10400 is good do not go for the 10600 10600 is just way too much and do not ever go for the 10600k that is just way too much also stick to the 10400 because both of them, the 10400 and the Ryzen 5 3600, are the closest competitors to each other. Next, this will be the first build where we're going to have a dedicated GPU. Where the dedicated GPU is going to be a reasonable one. Well, we won't go root AMD, but we will go for an RTX 2060 at least. So if we go to Google RTX 2060, we're going to go to low to high. Now, good thing about this graphics card is that it is going to be present in both the Intel system and the AMD system because of the good qualities it has. So, if you scroll down here, the Zotac RTX 2060 is now at a price of $465. So, as you see, prices keep fluctuating up and down. No one knows when the price will actually change or even go back to its own self. Like, just a while ago, I saw my price at $439. And I thought that that was a pretty fixed price already. Later did I know, the price fluctuated again. And there's this one by Big Apple Baby. For $433.44 plus tax. So this just shows you how much the prices for just tech fluctuates up and down. I just took my average of $439 because that's the cheapest I saw it when I got it. And I made this list. So it'll be the RTX 2060 Zotac by $439. Or you can get the RTX 2060 KO by EVGA. So the difference between the KO and the usual RTX is that the KO is by EVGA and it's... Basically, a way to sell out the RTX 2060 by just naming it KO and just pricing it lower. After the graphics card, everybody knows we need the motherboard. We have to have the motherboard. So, two different motherboards here. For the Intel one, we will go for a ASRock B460 Phantom Gaming 4 motherboard. It has RGB in it. It's $158, reasonable pricing. But when it comes to AMD, this one gets a little bit better. Now, because we're having Ryzen 3, 3rd gen, Ryzen 5, sorry, Ryzen 5, Zen 2 cores with the Zen 2 architecture, 
we have enabled for PCI Express Gen 4, which is something Intel, even Intel's 10th Gen won't have, as we talked about other episodes in random feed. But it's Ryzen 5 3600, it has Gen 4 PCIe Express. So we need to find a motherboard that supports Gen 4 PCIe. However, Gen 4 PCIe won't be available in this price point at the moment. Though we did get a bump from a Gigabyte B450 M3 DS3H. Okay, so when it comes to motherboards, we want to look at two things. What kind of specialties does your CPU have? And in for our case, our Ryzen 5 3rd Gen comes with PCIe Gen 4. So we want to look for a compatible motherboard for it. So the compatible motherboards are a B450 motherboard at this price range. We can't go up to the B550 yet because no one is selling them yet. But at the moment, B450 is the way to go. And now if you scroll down, we will can have a look and a glimpse at two different motherboards. We have the ASRock B450M or the MSI Pro Series. Now, I would recommend these two motherboards in general because of the price of $150 and the fact they have a B450M chipset in it. No other reason. And good thing is that this thing comes with quad channel memory support. And if you are a person who likes RGB, you would like the Steel Legend because it comes with RGB already installed on the motherboard. If you don't like RGB, go for MSI Pro Series. Both of them are just great motherboards and good to choose from. Now, after the motherboard here, we are now coming to an equal factor where Intel and AMD will now split roads. I mean, they already split since the motherboard, but this one they'll split even wider. Now, the problem with Intel, because of the CPU is more expensive, we have to cut in memory. So, in that case, we will only have a singular Kingston 500GB hard drive. Not hard drive, SSD. This is the cheapest SSD I could find at the price point. So, it would be a 480 gig. Kingston solid state drive hard drive which gonna cost $75.50 from the Intel that I've collected is gonna cost about $75.50 some may cost $79 as you know the prices keep fluctuating but I'm just gonna go on based on what I've calculated on you can look at here some 126 some outrageous prices just as long as you get close to mine, which is $75.50, you're good. As long as you're close to mine. You don't have to be exact, just close to it. Now, the good thing is that Kingston 500 gigs in this price point, really 500 gigs is really necessary. But one thing that stands out between this and the AMD is that the AMD is so cheap that we can actually add in a 1 terabyte Seagate Barracuda hard drive. So on top of this 480 gig hard drive, we can add in an extra one terabyte of C Barracuda raw power. As for the case and the power supply, we're just going to keep it the same as the one from the $500 bill because those, are, as I said, will be upgradable and they're actually good upgrades. So if we go calculate our numbers up, oh, before I go that, I feel totally 100% forgot. We haven't talked about RAM yet. Silly me. Without having... <laughs> you can't run a computer without RAM. So, let's get into RAM now. We're going to go into RAM. So, basically, we're just going to keep it 3200. As you know, MS uh, AMD likes fast RAM. As well as Intel starting to need fast RAM also with the new 10th gen chips. So, with this new RAM, we're going to look at 16 gig kits. And this time around, we're going to have enough for dual channel. So we're going to have dual 8 gig sticks. So what we're going to do is looking for a 16 gig DDR4 RAM kit. And the first one pops up is the one that I chose right here. Is the Corsair Vengeance LPX 16 gigs of 2.16 gigs as 2 8 gig sticks at 3200 megahertz. Now, good thing is that this thing doesn't have RGB. If you want RGB, you can go for the one below, but then it's a singular stick. We do not want singular sticks. Or you can go for 129 for dual 8 gig sticks, which is something I would recommend. But if you have it, if you have the budget, 
then you do it. Or if you don't require the speed of 3200, then go ahead and do it. But for me, for a $1,300-ish system, basic 3200 megahertz RAM will be good enough. I'd rather spend my money elsewhere for in the CPU department or the GPU department. I do not want to spend my miscellaneous money on RGB at the concurrent moment. So if we tally our point man, uh, our mounts up now, that our Intel build will cost $1,232.50. Whilst our AMD build will cost $1,200.45. And between this, this yes may have $10 more on AMD side. But remember, with that $10, you get an extra 1 terabyte of C of hard drive storage to store your L or all your games and extras. If you want to get an extra hard drive onto the Intel system, it will cost you about 1290 which is going to be more than AMD. So it's more justified just the $15 cost extra to go the AMD route. I would still recommend to go AMD either way. It's just the king of price to performance right now. It is the absolute king. Right, so now if... 1,300, sorry, 1,300, I forgot to correct myself there. The previous one was supposed to be 1,200 price point. That's why hence the 1,232, not 1,300 something. I do apologize for that. But now let's just move on to the $3,000 price point. If you have such deep wallets, such, such deep wallets, they can go to about $3,000 price points. This is the setup for you. And this is then, once again, the battle between Intel and AMD. And of course, this one is slightly harder to choose, but still, AMD has got to get the win for the Ryzen 7 3700Xs, which is the CPU we chose. So, if you go and Google the Ryzen 7 3700X, like so, you would see that these processors would come at a reasonable cost of $501.66, which is what I found. But if we come back here again after a while later, look at that, the price may have changed. Price fluctuates all the time. And the good thing about AMD is that, one thing I haven't thought of AMD yet, AMD, all their processors are unlocked. You don't have to get a K, which is what you need for Intel. All AMD processors are unlocked, and you can overclock them to a certain amount of boost. Well, for Intel, you must get either a K or a KF to un overclock. And because our AMD is going to go for Ryzen 7 3800X, actually. Woo. Sorry there. Whoops. We're going to get for Ryzen 7 3800X. Totally blabber mouth. Wrote the wrong thing on my script. Doesn't matter. I do apologize. But we're going to go for 3800X right here. I mean, look at that. A $2 difference from 3700X to 3800X. Of course, you get the 3800X at this price point. Amazon is selling it at the Prism Wraith Cooler. And if you get it, the previous one there, for the $1,200-ish price point, we did not get any cooler. Because at the concurrent moment, those coolers will not will already include in the box. But once you come to the $3,000 price point, you realize that you want to get either a liquid AIO or a different fan cooler. But in case, we're going to get that later on. But we're going to choose the Ryzen 7 3800X for this build for Team AMD. For Team Intel or Team Blue, we're going to choose the Ryzen i Core i7 10700K, the newly released CPU from Intel. Both of them have 8 cores, 16 threads, just that the Intel has a slightly higher boost clock, whilst the AMD is stuck at just a pitiful 4.5 boost clock. And of course, before we get on, we have to choose a motherboard. We have to choose the motherboard. So for Team AMD, this time around, we have a slightly bigger pocket. And of course, this time around, we have to make use of Gen 4 PCIe Express. 
I mean, we just have to make use of Gen 4 PCI Express, as well as future compatibility issues, as well as future products using Gen 5, Gen 4 PCIe. So this time around, we have to get a Gen 4 PCIe motherboard. And the only Gen 4 PCIe motherboard at the concurrent moment is the X570. And the first one over here is the motherboard we're going to choose, the Gigabyte X570 Aorus Elite. This features Gen 4 PCIe Express, and it's a full ATX motherboard, not a pissy little dinky little AT M ATX. It's a full-fledged ATX motherboard with PCIe Gen 4. That's what we're looking at, PCIe Gen 4. Remember to always look that out whenever you're trying to buy a Ryzen CPU. I cannot emphasize that enough. And for the Intel, we have got, it was an ASRock Z490 Pro 4. Remember, Z490s are the ones for Intel currently because they have a new socket design. Remember, whenever you're looking for a 10th gen CPU, I should mention this earlier, but whenever you're looking for a 10th gen CPU, always look for the right socket. AMD is easy, it's either AM3 or AM4, but then now it's all AM4 already, it's easy to memorize. But L Intel just changed the socket, so it's no longer an LJ1151, but it's an LJ1200 socket. Always remember to look for LJ1200 socket. And for that, it's kind of easy to choose the motherboard. It's, it is already a Z490 motherboard. And as for that, Z490 Pro 4. And that has RGB. You'll see that on the screen, probably while I'm talking right now. And that motherboard will cost you $272.84. This motherboard may be more expensive for AMD the Gigabyte X570, but you must think about it, Ryzen was cheaper, the CPU was cheaper than Intel, and with this PCIe Gen 4 compatibility, you will not have to buy a new motherboard when everything turns to PCIe Gen 4, whereas if you get an Intel, you have to spend more money in the future, or just wait another year until 11th Gen comes out and actually comes with PCIe Gen 4 and unfortunately really AMD is the only one which has PCIe Gen 4 now so $398 may be more money than what the Intel CPU may be but really it's about future compatibility and upgradability that this stands out in for RAM we are going to go with um our Cooler Master if I'm not wrong no, sorry, Corsair Vengeance Pro RGB. Uh, if you like RGB, this is the one for you. As we can look at uh, it here, we have 3600 memory, but we do not want to look at the 16 gigs now. For now, we want to look at the 32 gig ones. So these ones are the dual channel 32 gig kits. So if we're gonna look up here real quick, will be this one. We got dual channel, 3200 or running 3200. I wouldn't go up to 3600 just at the moment yet, but 3200 really is the sweet spot for all computers. If you haven't got the 3600, it's up to you, but really 3200, I think it's enough for everyone like literally everyone if you want just a basic computer that is because games and can actually do everything 3200 is more than enough do not go and pay extra for 3600 because if you do scroll down at 2666s yes but if you do end up going up to 3600 it's no a big no 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 brainer for 3200 especially at its price Right, now we're moving on to the graphics card. Now, the graphics card was a little tricky here. At first, I started with an RTX 2080. But after further digging, I found out that the RTX 2080 Super costs only a couple dollars more. And if you don't believe it, look, watch. If you start from low to high, we scroll down we see the RTX 2080s, 2080 blowers, and we just scroll here. This is basically a promo, I know, 
but really a card of this caliber at $119.88 is just a steal. A steal considering that it gives about 15% better performance than the RTX 2080. Okay, maybe not 15%, about 5 to 10% ish. Better performance, but it's still a better performance of that. And $119,000. $1,119.88 is an absolute steal. Now for storage, this is where it gets interesting. Now this time around for both great news, both the storage are going to be the same. So because we have a slightly bigger budget, we want to look at this. And now we're going to go back to the topic of NVMe. So we're going to look for a cruise shell. Sorry, going to backspace here. A crucial P1 1 terabyte. And this is what we're going to look for. A crucial P1 M.2 3D NAND NVMe PCIe solid state drive. So you may be asking, what's the difference between NVMe and SATA? Well, basically, it is a, just a newer technology of solid-state drives where it, it can actually transfer its speeds. It has a higher bandwidth. It has a higher read and write speeds. That's why we're going to choose an NVMe drive. It's way faster than SATA by not, I wouldn't say a lot, but a decent amount to justify that if both are going to run around the same price, we would actually go for the NVMe storage drives because they're just better. And then you can just get more out of it from NVMe. So if your budget permits, see if there is NVMe. Just go, you can just go in here like what I did here. We don't need to have the extra one, just Google in the NVMe. Or remember down here, within here, we have set up information and features NVMe. If your budget permits, say go ahead with nvme and at this price point of around three thousand dollars you should get a one terabyte as for mine here is 163 dollars which is a good reasonable one from crucial p1 m.2 3d nan nvme pcie solid state drive for a thousand gigabytes now moving on to our secondary storage so we've got our main storage for os what about the one for star games what about hmm hmm why not so we're gonna look at it in here. So we've already got NVMe SATA. We do not want to put a clunky hard drive in here. What we want is to put in a one terabyte SATA SSD. So we're gonna go here one terabyte SATA SSD. And the first one that already pops up here is the one that has been chosen the wd green one terabyte internal pc ssd sata 60 gigabit per second now reason number one why we want to go sata because since we already have an nvme drive it only makes sense that we go sata if you have an nvme drive but you have a clunky hard drive it just does not justify just getting the nvme and just feeling your performance drop with just hard drive so what we're going to do is just going to help you a little bit and get a SATA drive especially a one terabyte one so total we have two terabytes of storage now this time it's different we have two terabytes of SATA and NVMe whilst the one before we may have the same but it's 1.5 terabytes of only just half of 500 gigs is SATA the other half is SATA but with a hard drive and they're okay about that for the $1,200 computers for 3001, of course, you have two terabytes. It's either SATA or NVMe. It's going to be blistering fast. Boot times are going to be like that. And then it's just going to be booted. Right, for the um, power supply, well, this is the one where we are going to be a little picky. For a slightly higher end PC, you will want a modular power supply. Now, if you get a power supply, like the, for example, the first one, the Thermotech one, you might ask why not we just use that because we are using higher grade equipment higher grade equipment requires more energy so with more energy of course we need more power so there are two kinds of usually power supplies the first 
power supply that we've been using for the first three systems so far have been non-modular power supplies. And the ones that we're going to use in this system is going to be a modular power supply. And then you now may be asking me, what is a modular power supply? A modular power supply is basically, if I'm going to Google this here, the one that we're going to choose is the Seasonic 1000 watt 1000 watt here 80 plus gold modular power supply okay so if we look at images of a modular power supply we are going to see this as you can see here the backs at the back here you have an array of plugs that you can choose now what this is is that in a box of every power supply they'll give every single cable that you can use to just connect into this now you may just think it's just for cleaning up having less clunky cables around but it's a good way to kind of get yourself organized and your peripherals right so let's say you only like out of all these all these ports here how many percent you use them? At most, you only use about 60% of them. So, let's say you have a, if you have a non-modular one, like let's say for example this one, it's a non-modular. You have your cable spaghetti all around the case. It must hide it somewhere. It must stuff it somewhere. Whilst with a modular one, a modular power supply you'll be able to choose which kind of cables you want to use or will be used or will stay in the system or you can use only choose ones that are going to be used in your system and just leave those that are not going to be used redundant and just leave it open and just makes your machine look cleaner and it's just less messy whenever you're on the upgrade in the future where you have to you know, unplug a lot of cables or just dig through them if you have a modular power supply or a not sorry more non-modular power supply so those are the benefits of a modular power supply and that's why i chose the seasonic prime x gx 1000 on top of that we have a gold plus certification of a 1000 watt gold Certif 1 plus 80 plus gold certified which means it's the highest not really the highest but it's quite high in energy efficiency that's why i chose those that power supply now we're going to go back to the problem of coolers so for the past three systems you see we have not used any of aftermarket coolers well now we have to start using the aftermarket coolers because basically the i7 10700k doesn't come with a cooler boo intel i don't know why you want to give that but we i have found one that kind of fits in the budget that takes all the boxes and there will be the thermal take water 3.0 ultimate now you may be bummed that there is no rgb but it really is a good price for what you get. So look here. We're going to look at a 3.0 Ultimate. So basically, for the price I got was 1145 Now the price kept fluctuating and it's now dropped to $120. And just look at it. It's $120. You get a 3 fan, 360 mil setup good to cool both the intel and the amd so we're just going to use this cooler on multi-purpose systems so remember the only thing differences between this system is the motherboard and the cpu those are the only two things different between these two systems the rest are the exact same as well as the case which we're going to look at now which is going to be the cooler master oops sorry would be the cooler master We're just going to have to look for Cooler Master case because they have just so many kinds. What we're going to look for is an ATX case as always, 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 always. I can't emphasize it. 
always look for an ATX case or one that fits your motherboard. $6.10. So there's never really a firm mark on what price would be. But as long as you get it around $109, you're good. So now we come to the totals of the Intel system. We have gone to a total of $3,057.72, which is reasonable amount. Reasonable, I'll say reasonable. So now we're coming on to the other side, the orange corner of the AMD. We have got a Ryzen 7. And with all everything here, we have gone to a total of $3,094.70. More for the AMD, but we have got PCIe Gen 5. Just justifies the cost. It just does. It just justifies it. I still pick AMD as the winner. I used to be an Intel fan. I still have an Intel PC right now. I haven't even updated to AMD yet. Wow. But... As of now, really, AMD has been stepping up the game. And <laughs> no way is this certain in our last category. The unlimited ultimate category. Right, so now, if those computers weren't enough for you, and you had your pockets are humongously deep, and that's not ultimate enough for you, then wait for the last category. The unlimited ultimate category. Well, we'll probably see AMD thrive again. Ha ha ha. So sad, Intel. Right now, in our unlimited ultimate category, the th things are, there is no budget. Just buy whatever is the top of the tier. And basically, the only differences, again, are the CPU and the motherboard. So, if your pockets are humongously deep, and you have around $5,000 to spend because none of these systems exceeded $5,000 unfortunately if I want to do I could easily exceed $5,000 if I do put in a Quadro or if I put them in SLI or NVLink but I did not I just want it to be something that's accessible at least so we're gonna stick start now with Intel which is already lagging behind AMD in one place is that the i9 10900K is not for sale yet. So the only thing we are left with is the i9 9900K. So we're stuck with 8 cores and 16 threads. Sadly bad. 5 gigahertz boost clock. And but still AMD on the other side, orange side. 16 cores, 32 threads. Uh, and a general thread of AMD being slow but not by much. 4.7 gigahertz boost clock at its max. For AMD. So, double the cores. Double the threads. Is it double the price? No. It's only $400 more. It's not double the price. Is it double the performance? Not really. In games, it's kind of double the performance when it comes to absolutely smashing the Intel side when it comes to multi-threaded tasks. Hasn't it always been like that? <laughs> Send for, of course, our graphics card. We have chosen the RTX 2080 Ti from Zotac. And for the motherboard for the Intel side, we have chosen the MSI MPG Z390 Gaming, which is a generation back. It's not the Z490s. Because AMD decided. Because Intel doesn't have this CPU doesn't have LGA one two hundred, so we have to use a motherboard from one generation old. And boy, does that cost a lot! Whilst for that, we have now moving on to the AMD, where we're going to use an ASUS Strix X five seventy F gaming motherboard. Woo! Now this one then cost double the price. <laughs> Who knows? Go figure. But it's a full, a full blown motherboard. Literally, a full-blown motherboard. At PCIe Gen 5, Gen 4, Gen 4, sorry, PCIe Gen 4, what do you think? I'll be double for PCIe Gen 4, hell yeah! And for the, as for the storage, we're gonna keep the main boot drive the same, NVMe, P, the crucial P11TB, except for the secondary one. We have moved up to a crucial BX500 2TB solid-state drive. 
two terabytes. Not that bad. And as for the RAM, we got in for G Skill Trident Z Neo 3200 megahertz RAM with RGB. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Everybody likes RGB. The power supply remains the same. The Seasonic Prime. The thermo- Now the water cooler. And this one. We have changed the Thermotech 3.0. Yes. But instead of the ultimate, we have changed it to the ARGB. So it has RGB and it's no longer white. Hey, I'm black. No, white. Huh. As for the case, we've gone for Cooler Master Master B ATX case. Which, surprisingly enough, is not the cheapest thing in this whole entire build. Guess what's the cheapest thing in this whole entire build? If you guessed it right, then you guessed it right. It's the NVMe SSD. That was the cheapest thing in this build right now. <laughs> and as we go for the totals now, you'll be shocked by this. The Intel system. Drum roll. $4,320.80. For the AMD, a second drum roll again. $4,939.95. Just barely missing the $5,000 mark. And all this, this is just a super computer, a super PC. If you have a super deep pocket, just get go and get one of those. I seriously get. But if you're like the other price points, I will recommend any of these builds that I have picked up and chosen really. If you could get somewhere close to my price, it's a really good deal. So just to recap, $500, $1,200, $3,000, and unlimited. Depends on which price point are for you. And I'll go through that right now. $500 is for... If you're starting out in your PC journey, get that. If you're halfway and you're thinking of upgrading, get the 1200 one. If you are hardcore, get the 300 And you have a boat ton of money and you just want it for fun, get the unlimited or ultimate. I don't know. <laughs> but that's got to be today. That's it for today for Techno Feed. That's the day for without today. There is no random feed. But I hope you all enjoyed today's um part ran part of me guiding you through the sea of new PCs for mid year. And I'll be coming out another list for end of year because you know end of year new stuff, new things, probably new GBUs also. But uh as for today, uh it's done for the day. Stay safe, stay home. Please subscribe. Peace out.